Having written so many comic books, how do you challenge yourself with new stories? Well, every story is different. Uh, I try to, you know, I try to come up with situations for the characters and challenges for the characters that they haven't faced before. Uh, for example, with the Knights of the Old Republic War, uh, we we tried to do a story where Zane was on his own. Uh, he had depended on his friends for so long to bail him out of situations. Uh, you know, this time he had to do everything on his own and had to do all the thinking. Um, you know, Kara Holt uh, you know, had been so accustomed in uh, Knight Errant to being the outsider who's come back to uh, you know try to try to rescue people, uh, but not she hasn't been personally involved with any of the rescues. Uh, with uh, the Night Errant escape story, you know we've we've brought in the uh, you know, the possibility that her family is still alive and 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 off in Sith space, and so the storyline has suddenly become a lot more personal. Um, and of course, with the uh, with Lost Tribe of the Sith, I mean that's a that's a that's yet again something we haven't seen before, which is you know the the medieval you know planet with no technology, where it's just the Sith on the planet plus. Uh, plus the uh, the local uh, citizens uh, who they are uh, who they are ruling, uh, and of course as we see in Lost Tribe of the Sith Spiral, uh, uh, we're we're about to find out that uh, there are more people on this planet than they're aware of. Do you like challenging yourself when you do a new project, or is it just sometimes you something it's not something you really aim for? But well, I, I think that you, you know you you don't want to write the same story over and over again. Uh, you want to you, you can. You can address the same themes again, uh, and from a different way. But I'm really all about you know trying to uh, you know take some of the perceived notions that we have about characters uh, and invert those, turn them on their heads. Um, you know, as we saw in Knights of the Old Republic, we had a, a Jedi who was not very talented. Uh, we had a uh, you know we had Athorians who were you know not intelligent and peaceful, but were actually brutish and and stupid. Uh, and uh, and so, uh, yeah. The I think that allows me to keep things fresh. Now, with two novels and two comic series, both featuring Sith, are you Sithed out yet? <laughs> well, I think that there's. Uh, what's been fun about that is that there's so many different kinds of Sith. Uh, you know, the Jedi Order. Well, you've uh, certainly introduced uh, quite a few new types. <laughs> well, I, well, that's the thing that you know, the Jedi Order in most of the t- parts of the timeline is monolithic, and there's a particular, you know, it's a single organization. Uh, but we we tried to introduce in Knights of the Old Republic that there were various sects within the uh, the Jedi Order. There was the Covenant. Um, there were the people who were following uh, Revan. Um, and then, of course, there there were you know some real you know, heretical uh, Jedi and, and, and that we saw in Knights of the Old Republic War, who felt that the Jedi should you know not be serving the Republic whatsoever and should be uh, you know, available for for use by the Mandalorians. Uh, but you know, generally speaking, the Jedi come in one flavor. Uh, the Sith have. Uh, you know, depending on where you are in the timeline, uh, they have a philosophy that's still developing, and they can, um, you know, they can be uh, they can be experimented with, uh, and we can we can tell different kinds of stories. Uh, you know, it really is a, a sort of a you know an odyssey that Kara Holt is on, going from one uh, you know Sith realm to the next, and seeing what uh, what makes them tick and what makes them function. Now, working with the Lost Tribe on Kesh, is it difficult trying to keep the Star Wars feel to it when they got such primitive technology? Well, you know, it's uh, in, in a sense we're doing a sword and sorcery story, except it's uh, lightsaber and dark side sorcery. Uh, yeah, to a degree, uh, you know, there are Star Wars style stories that you can tell even if you never leave the ground, uh, and. You, uh, you you'll find I think in, in Lost Tribe, especially as, as we've done more stories with them traveling around their their planet, uh, that the the uh, you know the the sailing ships that we've introduced and the airships that we've introduced 
you know, almost sort of substitute for uh, hyperspace travel and, and, and spaceships. And if you think about it, when we're doing those kinds of stories, you know, anyway, we're, we're actually doing the reverse. We're, we're telling, you know, stories about journeys that people are familiar with on Earth that used to take, you know, a long time to go across, you know, vast oceans to, uh, to unknown regions. Uh, and we've been doing it with spaceships and planets. Well, this just sort of inverts that and takes us back to a, uh, a pa- takes us back to uh, you know, a world where they don't know what's on the other side of the horizon. It's going to take them a while to get where they're going, uh, and uh, it's uh, you know they're not sure what's going to be on the other side. Now, working on that the Lost Tribe series, is there ever any pressure to throw in identifiable elements? To make it more Star Wars, and <laughs> well, I mean, we have the limitation that we we can only really tie into things that were known about the galaxy uh, before 5000 BBY, because that is when the Sith got stranded on this planet. So really, we're almost taking a, a, a divergent timeline off of uh, the Golden Age of the Sith, Tales of the Jedi stories. Uh, and you know, with a couple of exceptions that we've had in the stories, there are no contacts with the uh, the outside galaxy. Uh, so, uh, you know, the 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 touches that are there, you know, have all had to do with lightsabers and and you know the the force powers that the Sith are familiar with, uh, and uh, and you know then. You know, as a is more of a you know, metaphorical thing. We've got uh, you know the stories of the the individual on the journey of discovery. It just might happen to be an evil character who's on a journey on discovery, journey of discovery. Now, as is, there aren't any more Lost Tribe projects beyond Spiral that have been announced. But then again, not so long ago, we didn't even know Spiral was going to happen. Uh, with the future in mind, do you see the potential for more Lost Tribe stories? Oh, I, I certainly do. And you know, one of those things with you know, you know seeing that nothing's announced behind beyond a certain point, uh, you know, that's that's sort of uh, you know the reason that I always say the future is always in motion. Uh, when, once you start looking beyond about you know six months, eight months down the line, past when things have been announced. Uh, you know, there are always things at different proposal stages, and uh, you know, I'm certainly you know talking with uh, all the Star Wars licensees uh, about uh, about uh, possible projects, uh, and of course there may be things going on that I can't talk about anyway. Uh, and uh, of course, on top of that, I'm I'm increasingly uh, I'm dabbling some in some other uh, licenses. Uh, I have I actually have some Simpsons comics coming up here in a few months, uh, and uh, I uh, I also have uh, been working on my own fiction as well. Uh, I have a, a, a you know, my my first original uh, science fiction novel is, is something that I'm uh, you know well into at the moment, and uh, I've also. Uh, got uh, you know, got in mind an ebook series. It's very similar to Lost Tribe, except, except it'll be something of mine. I've been working on you know licensed uh, you know properties for a long time, and I can I will continue to do so. But uh, you know I was doing the math, and I have about a I've, I've written about a million words in the last uh, eight years for publication, and I own about five thousand of them. So <laughs> it's it's uh, it's time to bring a little bit of balance to my personal force, and, that, and that, that's that's always what I plan to do this year. Anyway, and so that's that's uh, that's why kind of the schedule is the way it is right now. Uh, with the Lost Tribe stories, uh, which character would you relate to the most? I have enjoyed writing uh, the the uh, sort of historian librarian Varner Hiltz. I've, I've been really enjoying writing him because he is, in some sense, the equivalent of Zane Carrick, and that he's, he's not physically very able, and he doesn't really have much in the way of uh, of Sith powers. Uh, you know, force powers, uh, but what he does have is that Sith ability to bide his time, to wait, to analyze the situation, uh, and to uh, you know give these characters what they have needed, which is a connection with their their distant past uh, that is meaningful to their future. Uh, you know, there is a there's a very you know big self destructive strain to these Sith that are stuck on this planet. And they really do have to have you know, a figure who, you know, while not himself uh, a muscle-bound, uh, you know, swordsman, uh, you know, they need somebody who is much more, um, you know, a, a, a wise sage. 
and it, it's hard sometimes to to you know look at a, a Sith as being wise, uh, but he does understand that you cannot simply have uh, chaos on this planet. You cannot simply have infighting uh, constantly. Otherwise, they're going to rub themselves out. <laughs> this is a generational project here, surviving all these years, and he's got to help them do that. Yeah, Hilts is one of my favorite characters. Thanks. I'm glad he made it into the comic series. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's I, 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 and he there's there's more to come with him. <laughs> now you've written Sith in a lot of different time periods. Now, uh, which <coughs> is there a certain one you like better maybe than the others? Oh, the, of the time frames, uh, yeah. e- each one has a different you know a different feel to it. Has there been one that's been more fun? Uh, well, Knights of the Old Republic is, is, is maybe more fun in the sense that uh, there's we have comic relief characters, and that there's there are parts of the galaxy where it's peaceful. <laughs> there are parts of the galaxy where it's all about you know it's all about the sort of things that you can do scoundrel stories about the sort of things where you can do um, you know uh, Zane uh, uh, or Griff or whoever you know just off to to you know make a, a, a dishonest dollar. Uh, or credit rather, uh, you know. So those those are, the, you know, that's a that's a different sort of setting. Uh, you know, Night Errant is unrelentingly dark uh, because it is, um, you know, it, it. We have not visited the Republic once uh, in the in the entire you know thing, which is involved now. You know, online prose, a prose novel, and and, and comics. Uh, we haven't shown the Republic uh, for a second. Uh, and we haven't shown anything outside of this you know, horrific, claustrophobic region where everybody's cut off from everybody else because you know nobody knows the hyperspace routes. Uh, that is uh, that is by intention. Uh, I really don't you know expect that we will be seeing the Republic uh, anytime soon because uh, it, it's not about that. Um, but it, but it's a different feeling and it's a different kind of a storyline and. So I, I enjoy that as a change of pace, and then the Lost Tribe is is you know it, it's a it's completely a, you know there's there's a fantasy feel to it that uh, you know it almost feels like you know I'm writing you know we well, well I mean we joke about the 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 uh, we joke about the maps that are in the uh, Lost Tribe of the Sith uh, the Collected Stories edition you know as being sort of our Tolkien uh, nod uh, because it's it's got that. Uh, you know, it's got that feeling of uh, you know a fantasy medieval style world where you know, you're traveling by road from place to place. <laughs> now you've got a knack for humor. Have you ever pitched a straight up comic series to Dark Horse? Uh, Something like Tag and Bink, you know? Yeah, I I, I have a long time ago. Uh, it is it it's one of those things where it's difficult to pull off as a uh, as a. Yeah, an ongoing thing, or something that goes enough issues to to get to uh, to get to a collected edition. Uh, yeah, really, right now, as I say, I, I've I've been kind of uh, I, I've been kind of you know, satisfying that urge uh, by writing Simpsons comics. I'm in I'm in Bart Simpson uh, issue 76 and issue 77, uh, which come out in October and November respectively, and I'm doing some, uh, some more for those guys. And uh, that is just absolutely... I, I had written one issue for them eight years ago before I started with Star Wars, and I got so busy on Star Wars I wasn't able to come back to it. Uh, and uh, But I just enjoyed the heck out of it because it's, it's screwball comedy, and there's a joke in every single panel. <laughs> and more to the point, the jokes are the point of the story. Is it hard switching in between something like Simpsons and Star Wars? Uh, not really at all. <laughs> it's it's. Uh, Do you ever it's, have to like refresh so yourself a little bit? Uh, you know it. It you know the cartoons are on every night, so it's hard to it's hard to not have that uh, that internalized. Uh, but yeah, I mean there are there are some other you know licenses that uh, that I've been I've been you know, dabbling in, and you know there may be something uh, coming on those, uh, and uh, and. Yeah, that that does involve me to uh, you know, immerse myself in what that world is about, uh, and and uh, and sort of switch gears. Now, Delray, uh, I guess it was Friday in their panel. They they announced that they're really heavily doing an initiative for ebooks. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you interested in trying for some of that? Well, the Lost Tribe of the Sith uh, collected edition uh, just went to its third printing uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and has been very successful. Uh, I I think that points to a model 
uh, for this kind of work. Um, you know, that was that was it, it. Really went better than I think anybody could have could have hoped for, uh, because this is a book which is being purchased by people who have already read the stories. Most of them online, uh, and of course we gave them something extra. Uh, you know, that is a that is a part of uh, of, of publishing which is uh, growing and evolving. And you know, I have certainly been uh, talking with uh, with Del Rey about various possibilities, and uh, you know, when and if there is something. Uh, to talk about, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certain they will you know, uh, tell the world. Where would you like to see the future of Star Wars storytelling go? Uh, I think we should continue to tell good stories. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, you know that this is this is all about uh, sort of extending the movie experience for the the, the, you know, the people that uh, love those characters and, and that setting. Uh, and yeah, I, I guess I would say, you know, we we have had some some interesting experiments here. Uh, with taking Star Wars as a concept into some new genres, uh, as I say, in a sense, Lost Tribe of the Sith is a is a stock fantasy novel in a way that uh, a lot of the you know, other Star Wars books are, you know, space fantasy or space opera. Uh, you know, there there aren't those elements to it. Um, so, I mean, I can see that there are possibilities for you know, doing Star Wars, as you say, as a comedy, or doing Star Wars as a, as a Western, or doing Star Wars as a you know, as a detective series. I actually <laughs> mentioned to James Luceno whether he'd be interested in doing something different, yeah. like a comedy or a romance or a yeah. detective story. Yep. He really liked the idea of doing a comedy. <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, yeah, that's absolutely true, and and so you know, I think it's it's broad enough. Uh, there are all sorts of opportunities. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, that's about it. Just uh, you know, folks can follow me on uh, on uh, uh, my website, which is farawaypress.com. My uh, Twitter is uh, JJM Faraway, uh, and uh, I appreciate all the support from Roku Depot. All right, thank you. All right.